Hey, welcome to today's One Shot. Today I'm going to talk about how The Night Stalker, the 1972 television movie, became one of the most watched TV movies of its time. Oh, I thought you meant the serial killer. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it was before The Serial Killer. It spawned a sequel and several TV shows. That's right. Several. TV several. Shows. A bunch. That's that's a lot. That's a bunch, right? That's a few. <laughs> so uh, in the early 70s, Dan Curtis, probably best known before this for the uh, for the supernatural soap opera Dark Shadows. Mm. Um, the Johnny Depp film, yes. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Dan, Was it? No. Dan, yeah. Dan, well, I don't know. I didn't see it. Dan Curtis hired <laughs> Richard Matheson to write it and ultimately hired him to write the sequel as well. Richard Matheson. We're going to get to who he yeah, is. Yeah. Okay. If you don't know who uh, he is. You're going to find out. You're going to find out. It was based on the then unpublished novel by Jeff Rice titled The Kolchak Papers, also known as The Kolchak Tapes. Um, it aired on ABC on January 11th, 1972, as their ABC movie of the week. And believe it or not, in 1972, it dealt with some pretty taboo topics on television, but in such a way that if you're not paying attention, you're going to miss them. For instance, unfortunately, the vampire's first victim was a lesbian who lived with another woman. Oh, um, in the, the, the in call. The, in the sequel, mm -hmm. it's actually right out there. It's clear. Clearly, there's, that there's, there's one of the women mm. that lives with another woman, yeah. Okay. Um. It showed Las Vegas as a city and not just a resort. Um, it takes place in Las Vegas, if you didn't know. Was this back when the Strip was just like the same oh, eight yeah. casinos? He drives yeah. down it quite a bit, and it's oh. pretty, it's, there's like nothing <laughs> there, yeah. Um, it's, it's gritty realism of the horrible, egocentric nature of people. Um, the Night Stalker garnered the highest ratings of any TV movie at that time, a 33.2 rating and a 48 share. If you're familiar with TV numbers, I imagine those mean something. I, I that that is a, that sounds like a lot. <laughs> it sounds like a lot. <laughs> it sounds right? like a lot. All right. Um, the sequel, The Night Strangler, also garnered high ratings, and they actually plan on a third single sing, ah, the sir, third sequel called The Night Killers. Mm. However, that got scrapped, and they actually turned it into the television show, which most people know of, The Night Stalker. However, the television show. It definitely has a following. Um, it's not nearly as good as the two television movies. Mm. Um, it's a little cheesier, a little hokier. Right. Uh, well, if I remember, the movies were a little like more gruesome, right? They were a little. Well, they were definitely harder. At least, yeah. at least for for television, yeah. Seventy two, yeah. yeah. Uh, investi and of course, it was about investigating the supernatural with antagonistic authority organizations and conflicting loyalties, which heavily inspired show. The X Files, which of course became its own thing. They also tried to do a relaunch of uh, The Night Stalker in the 2000s. Early 2000s, I remember, with, yeah. Uh, Stuart Townsend, it never went anywhere. So, you may be asking, why is it so good? Oh, hold on. Why is it so good? <laughs> uh, you I know, mean, I know why, but even they though, don't know yeah, why. Even though the vampire was basically kind of a generic Dracula with a pretty, excuse me, with a pretty direct modus operandi. And he was the villain of the piece, but he was also really just the MacGuffin. Mm. He wasn't the real antagonist. It was um, the real antagonist were the government officials. Right. Um, the fact that they were, first of all, astounded that it was a real vampire, or the more the more serious things got and the more out of control this killer got, and they could do nothing about it. And Kolchak, meanwhile, is just pounding into him that this is a vampire. And you're not going to stop it unless you follow my guidelines. Um, they're increasingly embarrassed by that. Right. And, of course, when push comes to shove, they really don't treat Kolchak very fairly. <laughs> now, one, just real quick so yeah. that I can throw this in here. Um, one of the things about the show or about the movies, I guess, I right. don't remember which one is which, that I saw, uh, it seemed like there was a lore to all these the, the creatures that he was hunting, and he like followed it almost heavily. In the show, in yeah, the, in the show, right? okay, yeah, in the show. yeah, okay. I mean, so he did he did study the vampire in the in the first movie, you know, basic vampire myths and lores. He, you know, the Night Strangler was a little different. You'd have to watch that one. That one's also mm -hmm. very good. I don't think it's quite as good as the Night Stalker, but it's still very good. Um, it was also a variation on themes from Matheson's own 1954 vampire novel, I Am Legend about the mythology of vampires conflicting with the real world. Which was written after the Will Smith movie came out. <laughs> that, <you know. laughs> it wasn't, I'm kidding. So, yeah, The Night Stalker, it was just it was groundbreaking in a lot of ways. Um, mm. You know, Dan Curtis seemed to be, at the time, the only guy doing this kind of stuff. 
Uh, nobody really wanted to treat any of these topics with any kind of seriousness. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, night or dark shadows was doing well. Uh, I will say for uh, a show from like the seventies about hunting monsters, it was not the camp fest that it could have been or right. right? I mean, at least for the things of the The time movies weren't no, no, the show. Yeah. A little bit, but the movies were not, uh, you know, and hiring, hiring Robert, um, Richard Matheson was a genius stroke. Um, you know, he wrote I Am Legend at the time. It was the second best-selling vampire novel after Dracula. So, I mean, clearly a lot of people had read his work. He's known for a lot of other things. You should just Google him. The guy's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and he didn't just write horror. He was a- Oh, lovely. He- oh, there we go. He didn't just write horror. <laughs> Sorry, a little technical glitch. Apologies. He didn't just write horror. He actually uh, uh, wrote the... Oh, my goodness. Um, what was the movie that Robin Williams was in where he basically dies and... Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, What Dreams May Come? What Dreams May Come. He actually also wrote that. Uh, Apologies. Now, in his book, I Am Legend, though, and this is, I'm I'm, going to come, I'm going to make a circle here. Even though it's technically a vampire novel and they're called vampires, they Mm -hmm. behave much more like modern Romero-esque zombies. Yeah. And that being said, by Romero's own admission, the book, I Am Legend, heavily inspired Night of the Living Dead. So a lot of people right. love to say that you know George Romero's the father of the father of the modern zombie, but really Richard Matheson is the mother. Right. If Romero's the father, Matheson's the mother. I mean, even so much of the story elements of zombies, like swarming groups of zombies, were like from Matheson's book. Right. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, you really you know if you have not seen The Night Stalker, if you're at all curious at early TV movies and actually an early depiction of Las Vegas. A really empty depiction of Las Vegas. Yeah, it's not the same. Um, yeah, definitely give it a view. Um, it's out there. Uh, they just released a Blu-ray copy, I think, a year or two ago. Ooh. Really good stuff. Anyway, that's all I got. Okay. Any, any questions? Uh, no, not really. It seems pretty straightforward. I, uh, I remember seeing. I think it was the show. I remember seeing the show, not the movies. So I was not aware that there were movies at any point. Yeah. Um, but and then you told me about them, and I'm like, oh, I gotta get these movies. Yeah, they're good stuff. All right. All right, guys, so check them out, and happy Halloween.